Well, hello, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Steve. Again. Again. Welcome to another Mac84 live stream. Uh, let me know if the audio sounds okay, if the video is okay. Um, yep. Yeah, let, me, let me know how that sounds uh, and looks. I have a slightly different internet setup. I went to call to tell them I'm canceling the service and they updated my speed, which really doesn't do anything. It gave me more download speed and the upload speed is slightly better than it was on good days. So we'll, we'll see if this lasts. Um, I turned everything back to 1080p high definition. So you could see every little speck on my face, I'm sure. And on these boards when we get to them, but, uh, yeah, that should, that should be good. Hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully that uh, sticks through for the whole stream. Um, you may be noticing my desk looks a little different, um, and that's because it is. So I, I changed things up a little bit, uh, give you a brief tour of what the heck has changed here. And essentially, what I have gone ahead and done after I fish out this wire underneath the tripod. I know, I'm so professional. There we go. Um, what we've gone ahead and done is move things around a bit. So I used to have... Uh, this screen here, a little bit to the right, uh, and these Mac Minis here were stacked there and everything, so you probably remember from seeing before. Um, and uh, yeah, so I moved a screen over there, so I have a second screen here, uh, which has been there once in a while. I, I move it back and forth. Um, so that's the stream where the screen where all of your uh, comments are. Uh, here's the screen where I see what I'm doing with OBS and everything. I got the two G4 Mac Minis there, so I have one running Tiger and one running Leopard. As you can see, they're labeled. Uh, I have a USB extension cable that goes out to this floppy drive, so I could read and write, um, uh, you know, uh, HFS HFS Plus discs from that uh, Tiger Mac Mini. Uh, there's a label printer up there, which I use to print labels. How about that? Um, and uh, we have two binders here. One is the repair guides that I print out. I'll be putting one in there in a moment. Um, and uh, other jobs and stuff they have to take notes of. Well, well thank you. It is far prof from professional in my look, but I, it looks much better than it was before. Uh, so thank you, Sean. Uh, we have a monitor up here, which is connected through this video scaler. And uh, that basically is showing this lovely uh, Power Computing Power Center Pro 180 Macintosh clone. So, yeah, this is... This is uh, a nice little setup here. I've had this video scaler set up for a while and I have a capture card here. Um, but what this allows me to do essentially is anything, including a computer like this, I have uh, three VGA inputs here. I have this scaler switch box and that goes to this little blue capture box thingy here. And then from there, uh, that goes into the Mac Pro and uh, I could import into OBS here. So if I wanted to, uh, I can uh, do a transition like yes. this. And you'll see my Star Wars screensaver run uh, as the video there. So, <laughs> thank you, Bruce. No worries. Uh, thank you for sticking with me during my test earlier. I appreciate it. And um, no worries, Jeff. Uh, and so, yeah, so that, that works, which is nice. Uh, and I have some bins here of my frequently used stuff. So I have... Most of my tools, the soldering tools I use are hidden down here, so I'll be bringing those out in a second. My little fan, so I don't breathe in as much of that stuff as I shouldn't. Uh, been a, recently used wires and RAM and disks and stuff, and then my drawer is full of tinkery parts there. And this is this is really cool. This is an Apple Pen from the 90s. Used to, I think you got it for free if you registered your computer. So, I think my aunt gave that to me. So. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, setup here. Of course, uh, we have uh, little Mackie from Macintosh Librarian there, uh, and then with a little R two D two and my uh, uh, Apple uh, two card that I have to recap there. But uh, yeah, so that's that's the brief tour of just the uh, setup that I, I've cleaned up my desk and redone. So uh, that uh, was my project over the past few days, the past day and a half or so. Um, and it started because I found this rack thing at a yard sale for five dollars. So I'm like, oh, I gotta do something with that. And it lifted all the. There was so much stuff on here, and that stuff is in a bin somewhere. I'll have to go through that again. Anyway, uh, let's get to what we're gonna get to here. So this is a Macintosh 
uh, two board, and this is uh, again from my friend Brandon, who sent me the uh, board to take a look at. But first, let me say hello to everybody in the chat who's been very patient as I as I spun around. I know Bruce was here. Thank you for stopping by, Bruce, even though you got to split for a bit. Hello, Jay from the House of Moth. Hello, Zombie Geek thirty three. Hello, Distro Hopper thirty nine B. Very specific usernames here. Uh, hello, Hot Rod. Uh, hello, Sean. Action Retro. Hello, Lord of Nothing. Hello, Sad Mac three fifty six. And uh, Josh and Raw Elements. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to have everybody here. So hopefully you guys are having a good day. Um, yeah, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually move this keyboard because that's the only thing I need a spot. Well, I can put it up there for now. Uh, I have too many keyboards on this desk. <laughs> so, um, well, thank you. Thank you for the compliments on the setup. Appreciate it. So I'm actually going to uh, gonna shut down. I think it's not the shutdown. Maybe I just put it to sleep this uh, Mac clone here, so I have some more room on the desk. Lift the keyboard up there. I think it, I think, I don't think this thing sleeps correctly. I think it, it still stays on while it's uh, going through. Actually here, let me, because it's not going to sleep, let me uh, actually uh, test something real quick here. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the capture of the VGA and you might be hearing some feedback and I apologize if you do, but let me know if you could hear eep. that eep. <laughs> let me know if you could hear that, because I'm trying to get the sound to go through. If it's all distorted, let me know, and I'll mess with it later. But I'm trying to get the sound from the old computer through eep. through that. So if it's too loud, let me know. But. Um, Okay, cool. So that that's great. That means that the sound from this old Mac uh, is going through the scaler and everything, and that's working fine. I just had to find another audio cable. Awesome. Awesome. So they don't get a copyright strike once the Star Wars screensaver actually does what it was doing before. So let's turn that off. Although it's very fun. They just walk around and make noises. Very cool. Okay, let's turn that off for now. And uh, I don't need this machine on, really, so I'm going to shut this off for now. And we will start looking at our job for the day. Why did you spit out the CD? You know I have no CD cases here. Put the CD back where it came from. Silly computers have a mind of their own. All right, cool. Probably hear less background noise that that computer shut off. Uh, I love that little thing. It's it. I was gonna put a different Mac here, but this is the only one that really fit, and it's been so reliable. It's been on the desk over there. I've used it in so many of my streams where I say, "Oh, hold on a minute, let me do such and such." So now I have a, a you know a Power PC Mac here with a floppy drive and a CD drive, and practically do a lot of stuff now. You make boot disks if I had to. Uh, the reason I had to move that stuff is is the only thing I don't really have too much extra room for here is the heat gun and the soldering uh, station here. Um, I think eventually I want to move that here. Can I do that? You know what? This is probably not be a bad idea to do that. I just don't want it to... I think it'll be fine the way it is. I'll just leave that there for now. I'm, I'm always going to pull the wires with my feet anyway, so... Ah, you finished your recapping of your 2FX. Well done. So I'm just uh, undoing the twist tie of this little fan here because with all the solder fumes and everything, we don't want to breathe all that stuff in. Just set that up. It's USB powered, so I just do that. And now I have a little fan. How about that? Okay, let's get out our tools. We don't need that one right now, I don't think. Um, I will need some more wick so let me get that a macintosh plus that's a good machine to have we were looking at those a, a few days ago uh q-tips we need the q-tips uh we need the solder of course isn't it nice when things are organized don't worry this desk will be a mess in like a week a day i don't know 
Um, we will need the multimeter probably. Put that over there. I think that's good for now. I think that's all we need. Put the glasses back. We don't have any capacitors to pop and hurt us, so. That's good. Uh, we do need our alcohol, what little we have left of it. I have to place an order from that website Jay sent me. I have to do that. Right, let's turn both our hot air station and our soldering iron on. Let's take off our watch so we don't destroy it while we're doing this uh, recapping session here. And yeah, I think we're good. All right, so let's space some of this stuff out. And the first thing is first on this board is to switch to the other camera, of course. Uh, let's do that here. Ah, there we go. And actually here, let me let me hold up the board to show you first. This is a, this is a really big board. <laughs> this is like bigger than my head, bigger than two of my heads. Uh, this is a gigantic board. This is a Macintosh 2 board. Uh, in fact, this is going to be a pain to, to clean in the cleaner. I, I wonder if it could actually fit in at least one way. Well, let's hope. If not, I'll have to manually clean it. But, um, yeah. Um, so, that's what the board looks like. It's in very good shape from what it looks like. Um, I smell the soldering tip. Oh, that's what I need. The little, um, the little coil cleaner thingy. There we go. Actually, I have, I have new coils. We'll see if I need that later on. Look at me being all organized. This is scary. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, that's a little bit better. Move those plastic mice over there so they don't get damaged. All right, so, um, yeah, this board will probably have a fun time fitting in that ultrasonic cleaner. But we will, I guess, get to that when we get to that. All right. Um, oh, well, that's why it's burning. The soldering iron was up way too high. Put you down to a reasonable heat. Okay, so let's get back to that. There we go. Um, and I haven't really looked through this. I might have to adjust it a little bit. That's okay. Alright. So I have to I have to move the camera. So the camera is a on a different thing than what I see through. And I could hide my hopefully hide my uh crummy internet thingy because oopsie <laughs> that was me pushing the stop stream button by mistake so for <laughs> you wondering what that was I mean, it's, it's a day. It's one of those days. Oh, boy. Well, hopefully that didn't... Yeah, yeah. hopefully that didn't uh, break anything because I hit the stop stream button and then I hit the start stream button again because I click on the wrong things. Anyway, back to what we're supposed to be doing. Sorry. Uh, the SE30 is on hold. I actually ordered, uh, thanks to my friend Bruce Brankus Creations, pointed out that uh, the two chips uh, I was having trouble with, well, at least one of them, um, I removed it and I saw some corrosion under it and what happened was the, uh, the chip leg fell off and I thought, oh great, I'm going to have to solder this back on. And then Bruce told me, you know, they sell those for a dollar or so. So I did a Mauser order of those chips. Uh, I should get those back, uh, back, I mean, shipped to me rather, uh, in a few days by the end of the week. So maybe, maybe on Friday we'll do a SE30 stream, something like that. But, uh, find a better place for this keyboard. Just put it there for now. All right, so let's take a look at this board. Um, there's a lot of flux and stuff here. The caps have already been removed by the individual who sent it to me. So that's one less thing I have to do. Um, so this will hopefully be fairly straightforward. And so there's just a lot of extra flux there. Ooh, thundering. Yeah, that's, weather is, weather is fun. Isn't weather fun? I feel like I'm gonna use up most of my flux uh, most of my remaining uh, solder, uh, can't use words today, uh, alcohol on this board, because uh, there, there is a lot of flux here, but you know what? Um, 
Hopefully, hopefully I get some more soon. Well, I appreciate your dedication. If you have power issues or internet issues and you're you're still trying to watch, I mean, I thank you. That is very kind. I mean, we don't have to clean these spots up too much because it's going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then we're going to put more flux on it and all that stuff. Yeah, it, flux gets very reflective, uh, especially this this type of flux that was used. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad or anything. It's just it's very thick um, and, and sticky. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put on some of my flux, and we're just going to get the solder off of those pads and clean them up to make them look very nice. Hello, Tobias. Welcome to the stream. Hello, anybody else I did not uh, get a chance to say hello to. Hopefully this individual does not mind me using tantalum capacitors. That is my preference. Uh, they are the only ones I have in stock currently. Um, and it is my preference because they generally uh, last a very long time and uh, don't have the uh, leaking problems that others do, so. All right, let's uh, take some of this away. Clip off this used wick here. I think we used up as much of that area as we possibly could. I like to use up as much as I can and not waste things, but there are limits. So I'm just going lightly over these. I'm not really pushing that hard. I don't want to uh, heat up these pads unnecessarily because um, they are old. And if I heat them up enough, there is a chance that uh, some of that crap could come off, and I don't want that. You're watching YouTube on a PowerBook G4. Is is it like burning a hole in your lap? Cause that's what that's what I'm imagining you doing. There's a lot of crud on my uh, scalpel there. Are you watching me in uh, in uh, what is it? 480. Is it 1 180p or something like that? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, hope, hopefully you're by a uh, by a bathroom. I don't want you to soil yourself in your power book. So this this flux is extra sticky sticky. Extra sticky. We're going to need to clean that up a little bit more. <laughs> that is also true. Those, those, those power PCs run hot. And there's no need for this goo here anymore. Let's, I might have to heat this up. Hopefully I could just get this off. No. I'm not going to, I'm going to have to use the heat gun for that. It's it's next to a sticker too, so I'm hesitant to do that. I wonder if I if I just applied a little baby bit of flux there. Would poking it with the soldering iron do it for me? Probably not, but Oh there we go. We'll clean the rest off manually. But. Don't want to use a heat gun right next to the the serial number sticker there. But 
patience and uh, maybe in need of heat if you're streaming on a power PC Mac. Uh, you know, maybe it's cold. And why pay the heating bills? Why? If you could just uh, have it directly on your lap there. I think that looks pretty good. Again, um, I have to adjust the camera just slightly. I think it's actually at a slight angle here. There, that should be nice and sharp for you guys. That should be hopefully sharp. Okay. All right. So another Q-tip goes in the trash bin. And uh, that's what I did. I printed out a, uh, a cheat sheet for this, uh, this Mac. Let me go grab that from the printer. Uh, while I do that, please enjoy, if this works correctly, um, my new Be Right Back thing with music. And the music is working. Excellent. I'm getting fancy now. I am getting fancy. <laughs> Sorry to pull that short. Okay, so this is a cheat sheet from the one, uh, the only. Brankus Creations. So this is a cheat sheet that shows where all the capacitors go. You could get the same one on uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, recapamac.com. So that's recapamac.com. Yeah, I have to play around with the volume on that. I didn't want to make it too loud. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll increase the volume. Whatever you guys think is good. Um, the only thing I have to do is punch holes in this, but I'll, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have it out. It's not going in this, the uh, binder yet. So, uh, we will put this in the room. Actually, <laughs> that'd be good to have on the screen. As if I could have a digital copy on there. Imagine that. Uh, no, this is a Macintosh 2. Not a 2... What would you say? 2FX. No. Okay, I will increase the volume uh, next time I play around with that setting. So we'll use a oops, piece of old-fashioned tape to just do that there we go we got our little cheat sheet there yay basement is making weird noises again i hope you got rid of that ghost because if they're not paying rent I mean, that's just that's just a missed opportunity there okay all right so uh, that is good uh now we need our capacitors uh -oh, where did i put that uh thingy i had the thingy here is the thingy. So we need four, uh, I'm sorry, seven 47 16 volts. Uh, not those. There we go. How about that? And we need the axial ones too. Don't tell. Ooh, I'm almost out of those. I think I ordered more though. The 2SI, uh, the 2CI is faster. And has built-in video, but does not have as, an, as many new bus slots. Uh, and can only accommodate one floppy drive. Uh, I would say the 2CI is... Uh, is Oh, see you later, Zombie Geek. No worries. Um, I would say the 2CI is a, a better compact machine. Of course, you know, it came out years later than the, the Macintosh 2. So the 2CI was a, a, obviously a compact machine. Uh, edition of the Macintosh 2. It's a very similar case, but single floppy drive. The Mac 2, you could have it with two floppy drives and a huge five and a quarter inch hard drive. The one I got actually came with the hard drive. Unfortunately, the hard drive tried to spin up. I tried to open it up to fix it, 
And in my haste, I reversed the ROM chip on the hard drive circuit board, and I think I toasted the circuit board. I have no idea what the first Mac to use the death chime is. That's a very good question. I I should know this stuff. It's the type of thing I'll, I, I'll know for a good amount of time, and I'll forget. It's probably one of the Macintosh 2s. Maybe it is the Macintosh 2. I'm not sure. Anybody want to look that up? Or fine by me to do that. All right, so we need... We need three of those? We need three? How many do I have? Oopsie. Oopsie. Alright, good. I have I have more of these. <clears throat> these are the ones we need three of, right? Four seventies. Yes. I can see them right there on the board. They gotta be replaced. Usually, like uh, Bruce says, the axial capacitors don't really need uh, replacing. But if someone is paying me to recap a board, uh, I usually just go ahead and replace them anyway. Alright, so I'm just trying to get... Oops, there's one. Three. Six. Seven. There we go clip this off <laughs> okay oof master just came and went there I guess we weren't entertaining enough I guess I have to be more loud and obnoxious <laughs> hey guys smash that like button all right let's see We've got 21 folks watching but nine likes if you want to smash the like button or gently tap it. You are welcome to do so. Very much appreciate it. Okay. So. Hello, David. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Alright, so, um... Yeah, let's, uh, let's actually get all the, uh... The pads ready before we start putting on the... The new capacitors on this Macintosh 2. Because... That will probably make it a little easier for ourselves. Uh, this one has a lot of flux on it. So let's get that going. Now, the only thing I learned is my battery holders are not the right size for this machine. This machine has the soldered on batteries. Let's get all this flux off of here. So uh, unfortunately, I... Um, can't replace the batteries right now, but what I can do is I'll replace everything else, and we could wire some batteries temporarily to jumpstart this machine. Because without those PRAM batteries, one is for keeping the clock and one is for powering the machine up, uh, you can't power the, the Macintosh 2 up without those batteries. You need to compensate somehow. Uh, you could do that by jumpstarting it, is what you know, you bridge two uh, pins on there, and it will oops, it will jumpstart it. But um, best to actually you know have a replacement there where you can uh, get everything get everything proper there all right so have you ever tripped the power by plugging in a computer of course I have not recently because uh, the I redesigned the circuit breaker here well not redesigned but uh, I added some I added a uh, circuit in there, so less tripping, less tripping. Where was I? That's right. Soldering iron. So let's get, let's put some new flux there. And get all that crud off of that area. I don't want any of that old solder there. That uh, residue there from that sticker. Okay. The SE30. You know, that one makes sense because the SE30, I believe, was 87. 
didn't the Macintosh 2 come out a little bit later that year? Because I know the SC30, I think the SC30 and the Macintosh 2 came out at a s similar time frame. If memory serves, which it <laughs> no, not always does. That does not always do. Doesn't always do the thing. Alright, so let's move this board around. And we have a cluster of places for capacitors here that we're going to have to look at. Not that one. But just This is such a big board, it's hard to... There we go. All right, so it looks like most of the solder is actually off that one. You know what? Do it. Let me see how this flux is, if it's still uh, if it's still fluxing here. Oh, yeah. All right. You just... Not the best, but it'll. Oh yeah, look at all that. Look at all that crap. All that dirt and yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, let's get that off of the board. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a few passes on this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Orlando, for the super chat. Greatly appreciate it. Welcome to Video City. Thank you very, very much for that. That is kindly appreciated. And uh, may I say, I fight for the users. How about that? <laughs> and Andrew's here. Hello, Andrew. Come, come to, come to yell at me again. <laughs> Be kind, please, sir. Please. So we are cleaning the gunk off of these yucky pads here. Let's see if we get some of that glue off there. There we go. What's the best starter Mac? Uh, I would say like a you know, if you, if, it depends on what you want to do. If you're going Power PC, any of the 70, you know, 7600, 7500, those are not bad. I mean, they're, they're not the, the fastest, but they're, they're a good starter machine, I think, if you're going Power PC. Uh, if you're going later Power PC, a G3, G4 Tower can't be beat. Those are good. Um, and. You know what? Actually, the laptops I overlook a lot. They're great. They don't take up a lot of space. An iBook. A, uh... Old PowerBook. You could usually find those pretty cheap because people think they're MacBooks and they post them on Facebook Marketplace or whatever to try and sell them. And then nobody buys them and they realize, oh. This is not what I thought I had. Uh, I, yeah, I would say I would say the laptops aren't a bad starter Mac. They're compact. There's... Uh, easy to find power adapters for. They don't really suffer a lot from the same issues that the old desktop Macs do. As much. I mean, they still do. But, uh... uh I have a few old iOS devices just from what I owned. Unfortunately, the first iPhone I had, which was the first 4 gigabyte model, was stolen. So, uh... I don't have that one anymore. Somebody stole it, not from me. I uh, gave it to my brother. It was his phone for a while. And they they done stole it. And so I don't have an original iPhone anymore. I have the 3G, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's very comparable in speed and OS and stuff like that. So I don't need the original iPhone. It would be nice for maybe nostalgic purposes to be like, oh, there's the original one with the, the chrome back and everything. And I took very good care of mine. So it's a shame that I don't have it anymore. But. Uh, well, the, the clamshells, I would actually say that the power adapter is the same as the PowerBook G3. And that was the, the barrel that Apple used for a while. Now, I have not been searching for one on eBay for quite some time. Uh, I have no need to because I, I have a few spares. But they are not as uncommon. You just have to know what you're searching for. 
any PowerBook 45 watt barrel that fits the clamshell iBook should work fine with the clamshell iBook. I've, I've not had any problems with that. Uh, there used to be so many third party ones. BTI uh, is one of them that used to make them. Um, so, I mean, th there there were plenty out there. Now, I'm not saying that you're incorrect if, as far as the eBay prices. I'm sure uh, anything associated with the clamshell has gone with crazy prices because people on eBay are crazy. But they are lovely machines. I very much love my clamshell iBook, and I'm glad I still have it. Oh, come on. I thought I got rid of most of this goop. Ew. Sticky caps and traces are sticky. <laughs> oh boy. Oof Master is back. I thought you had to go. He's making an appearance again. They are making an appearance again. I only say he because if I go to my YouTube demographics, it says 100% of my audience is male. Which I know is inaccurate, but it's just funny to see a statistic like that. That's not coming off. Alright, let's calm down with the eeps. <laughs> the moderators sometimes get a little fidgety. You don't want them to mistake your eeps for hostility. Keep it keep keep the eeps to a, a, a gentle roar. Yeah, the uh, the yo-yo adapters, uh, there, you know, there were a few recalls for those because the wires were so thin. Those are the silver uh, flying saucer looking adapters. They called them yo-yo adapters. Um, they look like a yo-yo. Uh, the wire on the original revisions of those were quite thin. And of course, they, they would get stressed and they would break and people had problems with it. So when you did a... Um, when you did a replacement for those, I think they didn't send you a yo-yo adapter. I think they just sent you a PowerBook G3 adapter uh, because those were less prone to issues. And I think those had a recall as well because the wire was probably too thin. I had to, I had to check out um, Jay's uh, recall site to see if that's uh, on record there. Less than $50. Oof. The microscope is fancy. It is very fancy. And there was a dead bug on a board... Uh, the other day, and you could just count all the bug's eyes. I should have saved the bug. It would have been good for, for viewing. There's a dead moth somewhere, I'm sure. Or a fly. But that's the, we're not here to look at dead bugs. That's my other channel, called Bugs84. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! That's the joke. Come on, get out of there. Uh, yeah, if, if the floppy drive is not ejecting, uh, I would try the um, replacing that, that cog. A compilation of me going eep, eep, there, you could add more to your, oh, I, I didn't, I didn't give Orlando an eep. Welcome to Video City, eep, that eeps for you, sorry about that. I'll give you another one, eep, oh, jeez. I ashamed. I would let this whole new setup go to my head and, and no weep. Ah. How dare I? How dare I? He is unsubscribing immediately. That's what he is doing. It's like I've had enough of this. He says, How dare they not eep at me? I paid for those eeps. <laughs> I just haven't had to super chat in so long. I don't think that I, I've, you know, I forget sometimes. All right, that looks much better. All right, we're gonna move on to the other capacitor. There's one actually right here. We're gonna clean that up. Then we're gonna put all the caps on. Ugh, it's a, it's a bit of a nasty one also. 
The new Mac Pro is fine. Just fine? Just fine? I hope it's very good. Oh, yeah, that's... So, if anyone has not seen it, uh, Action Retro, Sean, did a video about a, a cursed Macintosh, and it's just basically a very modified Macintosh SE that, that somebody decided to mod the heck out of. And, uh... It's a very interesting machine, but, uh... It requires some love and restoration currently, uh, and it, I, I am trying to help with that. Wink, wink. I won't, I won't spoil the surprise. I guess <laughs> it's not my surprise. <laughs> That's okay. Come on, there we go. Get that off. You turned it on. It did the death chime. Uh, it might just if if you, you're talking about your plus there, it might um, it might just be like the memory is not seated correctly. What is that? This is a pad. I have the feeling that Andrew is not the one watching. <gasps> it might be one of his offspring. Is that corroded there? Magnification. Oh, B, look at that. Well, that's not good. Got a wee bit of corrosion there. about that too much because the rest of it looks okay to be honest uh, let me try and adjust this just a little bit yeah there we go yeah it looks like I'm having fun yes it looks like That is, all right, just, just some gunk there. It's not too bad. Just some general gunk around there. Uh, you know what's harder to find than the Compact Max? The early Compact Max? I'm talking about the Plus, the SE and so on. The keyboards for them. Oh, look at this trace though. This this trace may need some attention. The keyboards for the Mac Plus, I only have two. Uh, I have uh, more than that of machines, but I only have two keyboards. I have the original keyboard for my 512K. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I have three. Uh, I have uh, three keyboards, but I have many more machines than that, but those keyboards are getting hard to find. Which clamshell iBook are you referring to, Andrew? My clamshell was never broken. Well, the screen broke ages ago, but I paid somebody to fix that. We, My parents paid somebody to fix that. Ages ago. Yes, do not use telephone cables. They are the keyboard cables for those early Macs look like they use telephone cables, but it's twisted on one end. It'll fit. You turn it on, you're going to fry something. So don't do it. Do not do it. I see a few people on eBay sell the keyboards with like the phone cable because they go, oh, yeah, that fits. You're good, right? 
And the poor guy spends $100 on a keyboard and, yeah. You can put two floppy disks inside of a Macintosh 2 model if it's a dual floppy drive connector. And if it's a uh, Macintosh SE with two drives, yes. But you have a little typo there. Um, what solder, so, so, soldier tool are you using? Uh, I have this Yahua 878AD solder station. It is by far not the fanciest. It is not the best. It's about 50 US dollars. Uh, it is a cheaper one, and I'm going to have to replace the filament inside of it soon. But you know what? It's, uh, it works. Uh, finally got Mac LC working with Skyscrapers. What? Well, the Macintosh LC is a slow machine to begin with. So, even with a, a, a SCSI hard drive, it's going to be slow. Uh, that's because it's a 32-bit processor on a 16-bit data bus. If you use that SCSI to SD adapter on another Mac, I think you'll be impressed with the results. But yes, even a SCSI to SD, uh, you know, won't, won't really, really speed that up too much. <laughs> Toss it out the window. It looks like we got most of that crud off of there. I'm a little bit happier with that. No worries, Sean. Take care. What soldering tip? Uh, this is a little cheapo kit of tips. It just came in a little plastic thing. Uh, I have a, It's a beveled edge. It Really, they're probably just no-name bits that I got off of Amazon. Nothing too fancy at all. Um, but, uh, again, uh, that it just happened to be the, the right uh, tool for the job. And I ended up ordering that from a recommendation from Jay of the House of Moth. He does, uh, you know, soldering work as well. And he said, oh, I had a similar station. Uh, these tips should work out for you. And they did. They work fine. Uh, the original tip that came with it, I pushed too hard and it... Uh, it uh, got a bit smooshed. Let's get all that flux away. I mean, this board's going to have to be cleaned anyway. But All right, so that pad is relatively clean now. Yes, the microscope is working, thankfully. It is an analog device. It does, well, besides the camera, that's digital. How many more we got to go here? We have one, two, right, we did those three. We did, oh wait, there's three more over there. Oh my goodness, how did I miss those? Did I do those already? Yeah, three, three, up. Oh. No, wait, I'm confusing myself here. Am I looking at this thing upside down as, a, as per the diagram? Uh, yes. How come I don't have those three? Maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Huh. Interesting. I will have to send Bruce a photo of this board because I don't have three capacitors here. I only have one by C19. And his uh, diagram shows three. So the diagram Bruce has has uh, must just because this is a later revision board maybe they, they change it up slightly, but uh, Bruce's diagram has three where I only have one. That's a C nineteen. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Have you ever recycled a Mac or PC? No, I have not. Hello, Kate. How are you doing? Hope you're enjoying your new friend. Ooh, this chip has some greeny bits on it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, that's that's a great example of uh, some corrosion. Uh, such a good example. I am going to take a photo of it. And I will be sending that to the individual whose board this is to be like, hey look. Just calls it as I sees them. There's some corrosion here. Hello, TomTom Tom Computing. I am doing well. How are you? I use a T-tip soldering iron. 
that's very cool. Uh, this is not the best station. I'm going to probably get myself uh, one that is a little bit more uh, featured. I would love one where I could just interchange the tips while the iron is still hot. Um, that is a thing, and it's really neat. Um, they're a little more expensive, but I right, so just take a picture of this one moment. Let photo booth do its thing. All right, and now we're back to doing what we're supposed to do. All right, so yeah, that chip uh, might just need to be cleaned up. But, uh, excellent. I am very happy that you are satisfied, Kate, as my official number one customer of recapping. So uh, the Macintosh librarian sent in her Macintosh SE30 for recapping. Uh, and it was in some need of repair, and we were able to successfully do that. And I, I'm very happy I was able to. That was the first SE30 I've done, and it wasn't too bad. There were some some traces here and there. I would I would say it, it uh, required some attention, but I wouldn't say it was terrible. The SE30 I'm working on now, uh, which is my personal one, is in is in much rougher shape. But I am very happy that you're happy. Eep! Hello. <laughs> uh, and hello, anybody else who I forgot to say hello to? Hello, welcome to the chat. We have 24 lovely people watching right now. Uh, did I try to boot up this? No, we're not done putting the caps on yet. If I were to boot this up, it would not do anything. Um, it probably wouldn't do anything. It would probably be angry at me. That's what it would be. All right, so let's uh, clean up some of this gunk. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I would uh, be interested in uh, probably getting one of those. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Being very careful because the new bus slots are right here, and I do not want to melt any plastic. Okay. It went from no boot to booting. That's what I call success. Uh, yeah, I started out with Radio Shack irons. So, Do you know the store computer reset? Yes, I do. Uh, when LGR did a video about that, I was drooling out of my mouth. Uh, especially at all the little Macs I saw everywhere. They were CRTs and iMacs and towers and junk. I am a part of their Facebook group. I know they're doing a whole reorg effort to try and set that place up so uh, people could actually come and visit. I was tempted to come visit, but it's a bit of a trip. I'm nowhere near Texas. And, uh, yeah, I, it w I would love to go, but the cost of the cost of getting there isn't the problem. The cost of bringing all that stuff back would be a problem. Because I'm in, I'm in New Jersey. That's nowhere near Texas. And for me to, to me to get some of that stuff back here would cost an arm and a leg shipping. Or I would have to drive. And that's a long drive. It's a very long drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whistling noises, those are definitely the capacitor going, bye-bye. I don't want to work no more. I have a few LCs that do that. Well, you, are, you are a little bit closer, than I, say, I would say, than I am. But... Uh, not by much. <laughs> Not by much. Still a bit of a trip. I mean, awesome place. I'd love to go. Um, if somebody handed me a bag of money and said, oh, by the way, we'll courier everything you want back to you. I'd say, sure. Sign me up. I'm going. But uh, let's be realistic here. Just seeing if this is damaged to these traces, which it, it actually it might might be. Yeah, that, that's what I suspected there. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, this uh, again and take a picture of this. Boop boop. Yeah, cause that uh, that is. Ugh. 
That's a disgusting uh, scalpel tip. That's what that is. Because that is a concerning trace there. Hopefully it's just on the surface. You can see the little black dot there. That's what I'm concerned about. Eating away at the copper. And if that is not dealt with, it will just continue to eat away. All right, good. It looks like that's just on the surface there. I do not order Papa John's. No. I don't think any self-respecting Italian would do the same thing. Um, yeah, I think freight shipping would probably be the way to go, but uh, that assumes that uh, <laughs> you could pay that either. <laughs> I mean, I, I would be suckered in at the, the cheap prices of the computers, and then you, you'd pay your butt out of it, you know, trying to get everything everything home. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the IMAX CRTs are fun because... They get hot, and there was no, there was no real fan, uh, except the the first revision tray loading models had a fan under the CPU tray, but the uh, the DV slot load models had no fan. So, no, oh, hello eBio five, I'm glad you're not too far away. <laughs> Yes, the proxy shipping is the problem. Trust me, I've looked into some of those things. It's very dangerous to sh go shopping on the internet and type in your debit card or your credit card number and then go, Oh yeah, I spent a a X amount of dollars on that. Now I have to actually pay the money. can I just not pay the money? Oh, the smoking emac. That's that's not good. Right, let's let's look. See the light from my microscope likes to fall off the Barlow lens here, because the lens is metal, but the adapter ring for this uh, light is plastic, so the grooves are not exactly aligned and uh, tightened there, which is very annoying. You'd think for such an expensive product, that would be one of the things you wouldn't have to worry about. And I have to. I have to just remember that during uh, their customer service hour so I could call up and say, What the hell, man? What are you doing with this? Alright, that's looking better. Alright. Double sided tape covereth. <laughs> yes. Well, of course. And I'm trying to enlarge this. There we go. Why'd the chat just like freak out there? Sometimes the YouTube chat just like blinks and everyone goes away for a second. I thought, uh-oh, I disconnected. By the way, how has the video quality and the audio quality been? Any cutouts like we were having the other night? Hopefully no. Hopefully no. Hopefully everything is going okay. Let me know if it if it is or if it isn't. A lot of flux. A lot of flux. Okay, we could zoom out now a little bit. I think think we're okay. We're okay there. Alright, so here, yeah, let's get some of that out of there. Where are my tweezers? Which which of these little organizer thingies did to put my tweezers in? Oh no. Where'd they go? And now we get no chat. 
Nobody's chatting. Now I'm concerned that something is broken. Probably isn't. Probably isn't. Everyone's just went to get go get go yeah go yeah. Everyone went to go get coffee. Got 27 people here. Hello, hello. Hello, anybody who I did not say hello to before. Thank you for tuning in. Oh boy, maybe I have to click this thing. Once in a while, the um, YouTube Studio thing just like goes dead. There we go. Now there's. Now there's the chat is back again. Not dropped since. Good, good. Or 140p. Oof. You know, I. The eight bit guy is welcome to his own opinion. I think I think the Mac Plus is a decent machine. Has a SCSI port in there. The only downside to it is you're limited to the 800k floppies, so that's a bummer. And you're limited to four megabytes of memory, which is, I mean, quite frankly, it's, a, it's very similar to a Macintosh SE. The only reason I would say. Uh, I would agree with him on that is because you're, you're going to have problems probably finding the keyboard and the mouse for the Mac Plus. But uh, if if you don't have to worry about that, if it comes with it, I think it's a, it's a good entry into the Macintosh universe. I mean, I would I would prefer maybe a bit more modern one, maybe a, a an LC or a, a 7500 or something like that. Maybe, you know, start with something. But uh, that pad wiggled. I don't want this pad to fall off here. We are just cleaning, Mr. Pad. We are not doing anything to harm you. There we go. Yeah, the SE30 is great. I love that machine. Bought a Mac Plus just to get the keyboard and the mouse. <laughs> yeah, I, I would uh, believe it. Oh, $50 for a mouse. At least the mice you could use the Apple IIe mouse if you're in a pinch. The same, same exact mouse, I believe. Yeah, I wouldn't pay that much for a Mac that has to be shipped. No, thank you. Uh, you know what? I, I watched his capacitor video before I started my first video, my first ever video in 2017, besides my intro video, when I work on a Macintosh 2CX. That's why I rocked the capacitors off, because I thought, well, if he's doing it, I'm going to do it. It was before I knew any better. Uh, thankfully, uh, I did not cause any damage, I don't think, to that board. That... Although that board still has Nubus slot issues. So may maybe I blame him. No, it's, it's my own decision to do that. Even if, even if it was a dumb one. Monkey see, monkey do. Still blaming. Uh, yeah, I, I believe the Apple II... I mean, you want... Just double check on that. Uh, I believe the Apple IIe mouse is the same exact mouse. I've also heard the Lisa mouse works. But, um, again, the Lisa's mouse is much harder to find. So I don't think that would save you any money. I mentioned my SE30 is boot looped. Um, try resetting the memory in your SE30 and reseeding the ROM. If that doesn't work, you might have some traces or capacitor issues. Has the machine been recapped? And if it has not, you know exactly what I'm going to suggest you do. <laughs> well, uh, Tom Tom Computing, I have not recapped a PowerBook 145 yet. I think I have one. Uh, I will get around to it. And I mean, obviously there are other people who could do what I do. But if you would like to purchase my services, um, I would be happy to uh, give you a quote on that. Yeah, if, uh, if it's doing something weird like that and needs to be recapped, that's the first thing I would try. It's very inexpensive. If you have all the parts and the tools, just do it yourself. There's no sense messing around and being like, well, let me try this, 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 this. If it needs to be recapped, just recap it. And we got a little solder ball here. Has Jay been working on this board? We have a little solder ball. I think I, I, think I scooped that up. Let's see if Jay's actually still paying attention. Excellent to hear, Kate. I'm glad to know that the Apple IIe mouse does work with the Plus. I'm actually, I'm doing, let me get your feedback on this. Um, 
Uh, let me just read this. Uh, plus, uh, the broken floppy drive thing. Yeah, the gear on the floppy drives do go on those. So you have to be careful. Um, I am working on a video series about essentially getting into vintage Macintosh collecting and, and such like that. And I, I want to touch a variety of topics um, for, for someone who's just getting into things, who has, you know, they found a Mac in a dumpster or they found it at a thrift store and they picked it up and they go, huh, what should I do with this thing? I, I want to start a video series uh, on my channel where I'm just like, hey, here's the basics because there's so many things to consider for better or worse. Um, you know, th these things can be complicated. And uh, I was thinking, put a put a video series together with that. And excellent TomTom Tom Computing. Well, if you go to Mac84.net, there is a lengthy form to fill out. And most of it is just basically, you know, common sense stuff. But if you fill out that form on Mac84.net, you have to go to the, the, the uh, non-retro site. Um, that will send me an email and I'll get back to you with some details there. But uh, yeah, the video series would talk about uh, formatting discs, getting discs, getting a keyboard, getting a mouse, you know, stuff that you need to use the Mac, uh, transferring stuff to the Mac from like a modern machine, uh, talking about bridge computers, stuff like that. No worries, yeah, you could always just send me a, uh, a message and I'll let you know uh, the logistics of how much, I, I base the, the computers on how many capacitors need to be replaced and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm, I don't charge an arm and a leg, honestly. I, I don't, I think, uh, without saying the price, Kate would agree that my services were reasonably priced for, for the, the effort that I go into <laughs> for, for most of these machines. Uh, obviously, if it's more than just a simple recap, if it requires some trace repair, um, there are additional costs uh, for my time that I have to charge for. Uh, otherwise, that's just a rabbit hole. I mean, I love doing eight-hour streams as much as the next person, but um, that is that is something I just have to account for when doing work. Do you have a, a processing fee? Um, usually, and of course, I'm just starting doing this for clients here. If I can't get it to work, we will come to an agreement of what my time was worth. Um, it wouldn't be an exorbitant amount. Obviously, if you send me something that is in not working condition and I can't get it to work, I will likely not charge you the full price. I'll probably charge you like the cost of the capacitors and materials. Uh, the capacitors are a few dollars altogether, maybe five, ten dollars. Uh, maybe what I use in flux or whatever. It, probably, probably not too much. <laughs> no worries, Kate. Uh, it was very good practice for the SE30 I'm working on now, so uh, I actually enjoyed the opportunity. So, like the plus, it's grinding to eject. Yes, that. Uh, that gear needs to be replaced. There are various 3D printed ones. I've n I haven't purchased one yet. I know there are various 3D printed ones out there. Um, I know some are better constructed than others. Unfortunately, I have not tested them. I know JDW did a video on uh, them. You could search for JDW and floppy eject gear. I'm, there's a very detailed video on that. Um, I know Bruce of Brankus Creations is messing around with that also. Um, I don't know if he did a video on that yet, but... Uh, Oh, that that is a, a hefty shipping cost there Nick I don't know if that would be worth it <laughs> unless you want to just rip the power supply off and send that to me hello Bruce we were just talking about you all good things all good things I assure you we were talking about the floppy gears uh, and I know you had some expertise on those the Mac 2 isn't looking too bad uh, one trace looked a little sus as you would say um, but you know these uh, these pads aren't all aren't all terrible always seeing if this stuff is actually grime or if it's just dirty solder or what, what that is <laughs> I like Mackie too in fact a little, a little cameo here. It's a little, little Mackie here says hello. Go watch the Macintosh Librarian's channel. That's my best Mackie impression, and it's terrible. But that's my best impression. Very, very adorable. Little guy. 
it helps if you bribe me when you when you <laughs> when you send me items to recap. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh. Yeah, the amount of flux that was already on this board is uh, is what is taking the most amount of time, actually, because we're here for over an hour already. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's let's try and get some of that off. Let's get that off there. Make a mess, I know, but. Should have used some more flux on there. Ah, sometimes the flux just does not want to come out of the dispenser. We'll just be using the uh, the solder wick. I just want to get some of that crud off of there. There we go. Solid. Okay. Oh, that was sort of off camera. Apologies. Apologies to the 27 of you watching. That was a bit off camera. I really need to order more uh, alcohol. I am running very low, and I know I mentioned that last time. I just need to get around to ordering it. I'll do that after the stream, maybe. Okay, uh, why are those being so stubborn? Uh, these little, these little um, glue things that hold the, um, that would hold the components to the board as they're putting them on the factory. Quite annoying to scrape off. Don't want to gouge the board or anything. I'm just lightly flicking on these, and I know there's that trace right there. Hopefully that will loosen itself. There we go. When this is in the ultrasonic cleaner. If I could fit it in there, that's the, that's going to be a problem. And 28, the number keeps fluctuating. <laughs> yes, Bruce, first one, then the other. <laughs> That would be a live stream, I think. Everybody would be like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> okay, those don't look too bad. Okay. All right, where are we off to next? I have to take a look at this board. I need one of those things where there's a hot button I can just switch the scenes automatically and be fancy. Uh, okay, we have one more over there to look at. I can just look at the flux until. Uh, one, two, three. Three more to go. I did notice something interesting, Bruce, and, and, I, and I didn't print out the text version of your guide. So I can't tell if it's, uh, if you note it on your website, Bruce. But, uh, on the bottom of this, this is a revision B board, I believe. There is one capacitor, C19 here. But on the guide that you show, uh, you have three capacitors there, uh, which are C122, 117, and 114, maybe? Uh, those may be incorrect, but actually, that picture looks very different from mine. Yeah, because uh, I don't have any RAM chips here. So... It's uh, very interesting, or, or memory chips, whatever they are there. So, different revision board, I'm sure. But, uh, what did you miss? More cleaning. That's what you missed. Yes, this is a bit dusty. It's not too bad, though, really. Um, I've seen much worse. Much, much worse. But, um, yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so, what did I say here? We have three more to clean up before we could actually put some some uh, capacitors on here. Now, a lot of this flux is just going to stay on there until we put in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's not going to hurt anything. Although, this chip is looking nasty. 
that's not good. That that this chip looks very suspect here. Oh uh, boy. If it's 1950 where you are, then you have to reset your you have to put a new PRAM battery in your machine. Let's take a look here. If this chip looks as bad as it does without the microscope, I'm I'm scared here. Dun dun dun. Ew. 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 That's pretty nasty. Uh, I'm looking at the Macintosh 2 guide, unless I printed out the wrong one. Could very well be possible. The board image says Macintosh 2, but your model number is different. Your model number starts with 630, mine starts with 820. So, yeah. Interesting. Ah, Sony Handycams are interesting. They're fun. I don't think the time goes back to the 1700s, but I could be wrong. The wiggly black thing over directly in front of that Mac over your left shoulder makes it look like chewing gum. Okay. <laughs> that is one way to look at it. Oof. Yeah, that looked like the the pad was at the the pins were actually bridge. I think I downloaded the wrong guide. Well, ha! Huh. I'm going to check that now because I have the. I think I still have the page up here. Uh, where did I put it? Here it is. Mac two recap. If I look at the PDF, Bruce. For the Macintosh 2, Mac 2 underscore recap, it is slowly downloading the PDF. Why is it taking so long to download? Yeah, your, your board looks different than mine. Different enough. Uh, and if I go back to your main website, let me compare what I see on the board with what I see on the uh, picture you have there. Oh, yeah, you have the both revisions there. I probably clicked on the wrong one. That's why. That's why. Oopsie doodle. Well, I'm glad you told me, Bruce. Here, I thought I printed out the right one. Well, I will now. And now I get to make a correction. I'm glad I didn't start putting anything anywhere. This will be a Rev A. And I dropped the marker. Is Rev A. We'll be printing out Rev B. Thank you very much for that correction. Uh, yes, I will test the board after I, I recap it, if I get to get to actually do that. My goodness. Um, yeah, it looks like I, I need, actually need some additional caps here, because uh, we're looking at the Rev B. So this one requires uh, 13 capacitors. I only had seven. I only had seven. So let's let's do a counting game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I'll, uh, thirteen. Yep, there we go. We, we, we need thirteen. You've become a Twitch emote at the very least. I don't know what that is. I'm too old. <laughs> what? Let's go and go see these things with the tubes, the internets. All right, so we need more capacitors there, and we need one 10 microfarad 16 volt. Let me get that out here. 
Thank you for saving myself, Bruce. Nope. Nope. So, yeah, this is, this is 10 microfarad. Where am I looking? Where am I looking? Yeah, 16 volt. I can, I just don't know if I have surface mount caps of that variety, but I, I don't see the pads under the axial ones. Oh, the axial, uh, 10 you're talking about. Oh, oh, that's right. There's a, uh, wait a second. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. Wait, do I have the four? What are these? I'm sure I got the right ones here. Four seventy sixteen. Yeah, those are good. And then the two twenty sixteen or another axial. Ah, uh, yes, I see what you mean. The this that one. E yes, the pads are under there. I will be doing that uh, with this. So that's a good call on that. So that's another ten sixteen. That's what I have here, and then. That's the only 1016, right? Yes, that is. Sorry, I'm confusing myself here. The last Apple printer, that was probably some garbage HP rebranded things, because that's what Apple did. I think the last printer they did was literally an HP printer, and they just shoved an Apple logo on it. Or they didn't even put a logo on it. I have an ImageWriter one as well. They are fun. Maybe one of the laser writers was the last one. I'm not sure. Let me go grab that printed paper. Uh, you could you could groove to the the be right back music. It takes me more to put the transition on than it does to me to get the paper printed page. Okie dokie, we are back. The floppy disk holder on your BRB looks like a dumpster. Well, it does. It very much does. It is not, thankfully. It is not. Ah, okay. So, let's do a little inventory check here, shall we? Make sure we have enough capacitors. We will need some more of the uh, other ones there, but let's check off. We have one 220, yep, and three 470. 110, which is over there. Um, we need six more of the 47 microfarad variety. That's why you have to order so many of these, because you'll just get one board that uses a bunch. This is, uh, da, 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 da. these are the right ones. Yes, okay. So six more of these. You got six, you got three image writers from the estate sale and none of them work. That's sad. Uh, do they have an error light on them? If they have an error light and they're image writer twos, make sure there's a sheet of paper in them. Sometimes they will have an error light if they have no paper in them. Well, good luck with that, uh, Raw Elements. <laughs> good luck with that. Look, look at how many capacitors I only have left for the uh, 47 16 volt PC load letter. <laughs> what the bleep is that? <laughs> He's confident his battery will last for eight hours, so why not? All right, let's let's continue with this here. So we got those we will 
use our well, let me write what this is first. This is the Rev B. Revision B, Macintosh. I do have an image writer in the intro to my main videos. I do. I love that little printer. I We had one in my family. That was our, our first printer with the Macintosh we had. And um, we gave it away. We, uh, we got rid of it. There was a thing uh, at the Liberty Science Center, which is a museum not too far away from here. Uh, there was a thing where you could bring in old electronics and basically trade them in for points. And you, got, you could get things with those points. So we traded in an old copier, an old Xerox machine, a huge Xerox machine. And uh, that printer and probably a few other junky things, old car stereo, I think. And got enough points where I got uh, two PowerBook Duos. Or at least, maybe, no, I think it was one PowerBook Duo. And I think one PowerBook Duo came from my father's office. I, I forget exactly. But I got a PowerBook Duo out of it. Um, and I was, I was thrilled. Uh, I always wanted to go back there and get some more things. But I, they, they don't th I think they discontinued that program next time I was there. All right. So, yeah, we were looking at this chip here, which looks a little nasty. We will be... Uh, I mean, to give that attention, I think. Yes, Raw Elements, please do that. I'm intensely curious of what that beast is. Look at all that flux. Ugh. Extra flux. Handy laser printer. That's neat. Well, I hope if you get the printer, it works well, too. I, I have to adjust the focus on this slightly. You know, probably go a little out of focus for you guys. But uh, let's get some of this gunk off of these pads, huh? The flux is just not helping here. In fact, yeah, let's burn away some of this goo. Let's put this flux to good use, huh? Yeah, it's it's pretty dirty. Pretty yucky. Trying to get this even here, but I just have to do this with my eyes. Be right back, one moment. The, just the way the um, the way that area was, I didn't want to hit the new bus slot there. But yeah, that's still a lot of crud there. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Right. Uh, the Mac in the background. Well, let's let's take a, a quick a little break. Uh, so here. There is a Macintosh Plus. This one does not currently work, although there is one next to it uh, that works fine. There's a bunch of crap. There's an iSight camera box. And I had to clean that up, obviously. But yes, there are two Macintosh Pluses there. Uh, this is a Power uh, Center Pro Macintosh clone. That's there. And uh, yeah, we have our, our Mac Minis scattered throughout. But that's what that was.
I've been collecting for much longer than 2005. I will tell you that. <laughs> I don't even know when I started. I can't even tell you. It's been at least 15, 20 years. I'm just an old man with the computers. I like the computers. Right, let's get back to what. The, see, I, I, I go on a tangent here, and then we don't fix things. Let's just get some of that scunge or grunge or whatever Bruce calls it. I need I need the Bruceinary, a Bruce dictionary of all the terms he uses when he streams because I, I want to make sure we're on the same terminology here. <laughs> when did I first get into recapping? 2017 is my first attempt. I would only say I got good at it after uh, watching Bruce's streams and feedback from Jay and Bruce on their videos and, and their adventures told me how to do it correctly. My, my first attempt was not as successful as I would have liked. All right. Let's, uh... Let me just bring this off, because it's a little odd here with the, the uh, Nuba slots there. Just wanted to get some of these traces touched up. Looks like someone hit this Nuba slot before me, so I just want to be careful. I could probably make a throne. I wouldn't sit on it, though. I don't want to damage my computer. I'm too heavy for that. All right, at least those traces look okay. Uh, that chip is a little suspect, but uh, let me just try that edge real quick here. Yeah, that will hopefully clean up well in the ultrasonic cleaner. There might be some contact here. Yeah. Yeah, just a little concerning. Can you use a Lisa keyboard in what? Uh, I know the Lisa keyboard is a very different keyboard from what I understand. I don't have one, but all the things I've seen says the Lisa keyboard is very different from everything else. Now I'm going to take off this little C6 capacitor, which is this axial here. It should work fine, but I'm going to recap. I'm going to recap. So uh, we're going to, uh, where is it? You can't even see it because this board is so big. I clip that side. Clip the other side. Yes. Yeah. Very well said, Bruce. Very well said. No worries, Lord of Nothing. See you later. There's 33 people watching. Hello, all 33 of you. Hopefully, you're having a good Monday. I don't know if any Mondays are good, except when they're over. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm here for the next eight hours. So let's, uh, oops, again with this light. Oh, boy. There we go. Let's work on this one next. Why is this so wobbly? Come on. Uh, no 
No sticky bits either. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, I don't have a f I don't have a particular fondness for Windows 95. I actually never used Windows 95 until years after I used Windows 98 because I grew up with a Mac. We didn't have a PC until around 1998 or so in the house. And it was because my mom needed to do uh, work at home, which was PC based, and we had soft Windows 95, which ran like hot garbage. So. Uh, really have a lot of experience with Windows 95. Uh, our first PC had Windows 98 on it. And uh, even that was uh, crummy. Let's see if uh, these will want to come off by themselves. Oh, no legs. Okay. Just crummy old solder. That will need some cleaning. Yuck. It was Windows 98 SE. I don't, I don't know if it had SE on there. I, I would have to double check. I still have the motherboard for that computer and the hard drive. But the, the rest of the machine I may have trashed. It was a, a E-Machines E-Tower 333K with an AMD uh, processor. Actually, I think I have the front panel of the case somewhere. Um, no, I don't think... It, maybe it didn't have SE on it if it was released that late. It was probably the... No, it did not have SE on it because I remember when we got an Ethernet card years later, um, I had to install Windows 98 SE on it just to get, um, you know, the Ethernet drivers. And uh, the machine was not happy. But yeah, I I mean the first Windows I really used heavily was ninety eight. You know what? There was there was if you go watch like those old episodes of the Computer Chronicles, there was so much talk about Windows ninety five. And this this I know some of this because the clone video I'm doing touches on Windows ninety five because it all takes place around that same time time frame. Um, there was so much talk about Windows ninety five because. It was the first version of Windows that really duplicated a lot of the look and feel of the Mac more than what the previous version of Windows did. And some people were saying, well, when Windows 95 comes out, you're going to basically, basically be able to do what you could do on a Mac, but at the cheap cost of a PC. And that was, that was the talking point that everybody kept saying. And I don't know if that necessarily was true, because Windows 95 had its own share of issues. I mean, yes, it was a, a, a vast improvement over its predecessor, but it wasn't free of problems. Uh, I would say maybe it hurt Mac sales, but I'd, I'd say no more than the other version of Windows. I mean, I don't, I'm not looking at sales figures or anything. I, I couldn't tell you. I just my opinion there. All right, that one's not too bad. Where else do we move on from here? We have one there. Uh, and I see, I see two more. Let's try and count them, make sure I got them. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, yeah. So, got one more over here that we have to, uh, take care of. Uh, yeah, so I bought a PC for games in 2007, 2008, and strictly for games, and my new graphics card was so fancy, the latest drivers and all the fancy features did not work on Windows XP, so what did I do? Well, I didn't go buy a version of Windows, and no, this story is not ending how you think it is. Um... For a time being, 
Microsoft had a promotion going on for Windows Vista that if you watched a bunch of Windows marketing thingies, you would get a free copy of Windows Vista Business Edition. So what did I do? Well, the only way you could watch these videos was on a PC. So I installed Parallels Desktop, I installed Windows XP, and I watched these unskippable full screen videos and minimized <laughs> my virtual machine. And six to eight weeks later in the mail, I got a free copy of Windows Vista Business Edition. And that is what I installed on my very first uh, gaming PC build. Well, not my first gaming PC build was a Pentium 4, but uh, my second PC build. But I didn't have to pay for a version of Windows, so there you go. I think that was the first Windows, last Windows version I, I, I got. So much flux. Yeah, so I think I paid around the, around the right price for a copy of Windows Vista, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the price being zero dollars. Although I guess my time and effort could be uh, could be calculated there. My wife has a, I think it's a 2017 Air. It works pretty well. Get some of that sticker gunk out of there. Yeah, I like the 8-Bit Guy's videos. Uh, he's been doing a pretty interesting series where he uh, was showing a bunch of uh, notable places in Texas related to computer history. I thought that was neat. That's not something everybody could do a video series on. I mean, just about anybody who's skilled can do a video on a video game system or a computer system or anything like that. But I, I thought that, that that was an interesting interesting uh, thing to do. I, I, I want to see more of those. There was a, I think he did two episodes so far. Um, I don't think I've seen any other ones, but... But usually it's uh, people I subscribe to. Obviously, Bruce from Breakfast Creations, Jay from the House of Moth, Mac Yak, all those fine things with I'm sure all of you subscribe to. But some of the quote-unquote celebrity YouTubers. Oh, and Greg, Greg Rucke of Rucke Mods, Mac Attack, Mike's Mac Shack, all those. Um, Dana does stuff even though he didn't release a video yet. We are, we are waiting patiently. Um, some of the other YouTube subscribers I subscribe to. Our LGR, of course, um, the 8 bit guy, of course. Uh, Techmoan is one of my absolute favorites. I support him on Patreon, and you get these like hour long rambles, which I, I just am laughing myself silly for. He's, he does, he does an excellent job in his videos. Um, and uh, Technology Connections is another one. Uh, the Nostalgia Nerd is another one. Too many to list. I'm going to start listing them, but. Uh, I very much enjoy a lot of their videos. Look at, look at this crap on the board here. What is that from? Oh, you're out of focus. My apologies. There we go. Yes, I am aware, Andy. Please don't say the same thing a few times. Otherwise, the moderator's going to come click you. You don't want them to do that. Let's, let's keep scraping along this here. Uh, is that actually gonna... I don't know if that's corrosion or what it is. Let's take a deeper look there. What is that? Is that just gunk or what? You found me through Tech Creations. See you later, Andy. 
Tech Creations. I don't know what I don't I don't know if I've seen Tech Creations. I haven't heard of them. Maybe I should look them up. Unless they're a website or something like that. Hello, Trina. I did not see you. Welcome to the chat. Looks like the board coating is coming off. Well, we will we will put some well, if I have if I put UV solder mask on you, that's going to uh, that's gonna have to go in the sun because I don't got one of them fancy lasers like Bruce does. Bruce has a fancy laser. I will let him do a video about it, but it's a fancy laser. Oh, but he did do it. He did show it off in his video, so it's not a secret. I felt like I, I, I blew a secret there for a second. So, oopsie. All right, is that the last? Nope. There's there's was one more here over here. This is just this is a lot of. Uh, La Stefender. Let me just pull this one close to me, because, uh, again, the, where did my wick go? Did, <laughs> how did I lose my solder wick? All right, who took it? Which one of you took it? Did it fall down? Yes, it did. Fell on the ground. Is this the same board you've been working on? Best. No, this is, a, <laughs> this is a Macintosh 2 board. This is the first stream I'm doing of it. Uh, Brandon sent me this board to fix up, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, he's the, also the one who sent me the uh, Macintosh SE30. But yes, I did do a lot of streams on that because I thought, oh, I'm going to get this to work. It's going to be great. And no, one problem after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. There is that little, little nub there. There's just a lot of flux on this board, and not all the alcohol in my bottle is going to clean that up. We will try... Nope. <laughs> I mean, the flux isn't going to harm anything. It's just making it a little harder for me to clean things up later on, especially when it dries Yes, I will have to do that, although um, I did notice there were a few chips when I removed them that the pads were just rotted underneath. Uh, and it could be because I put it through an ultrasonic cleaner, it could be the cleaner just was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back there. And uh, so I did order, thankfully Bruce pointed out, thank you Bruce, that some of those chips are just common chips you can get replacements for. And so I ordered some. They will be coming in a few days, and we'll have a look at that when they arrive. And uh-oh. Is that what I think it is? Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. We have a broken trace, it seems. A broken trace. Yes, if you thought it was a heartbreaker. I broke my neck on that thing, staring at it. And, ugh. All right, yeah, I, I, that's, this, this, that was not, uh, hopefully we get that resolved, because that's, that's a machine I want to work. I don't have one. I want it to work. Let's see if we could fix this. Let's take another picture. Scrapey scrape. Yes, it may not be broken. Let's just. Let's keep our fingers crossed here. This this light is just smashing into my hands. Smashing. Be very careful here. Ooh. Not looking good. Well, let's just cut to the chase here. We have a multimeter, don't we?
I mean, we're going to have to clean that up anyway, but... No! The trace is broken! Well, that's annoying. But, we should be able to fix that. Let's, uh... I can fix a broken trace, Jacob. Uh, we did that in the other stream. I think it came out quite well. Uh, it requires uh, some careful, careful work, but I'm confident we could do it. Look at oh, look at that! That's just rotted out, completely rotted. There is no, there's no trace of that trace. But dum -tsh. thank you, thank you. Ew. It is time for a via. A via. Eep, indeed. Eep, eep, eep. Yeah, that is a. Uh, that ain't. Oh, this is even worse over here. Look at this. Hold on. We got some tra more trace repair to do here because. If I go uh, south of that direction, where are we looking here? That is via the. It's that. I need to go to the right of that. Look at this! Look at this! That ain't good either. Uh, again, the light falls off the microscope. Thank you! Put that back on there. That almost looks like somebody tried to tried to put some UV solder mask on it already. Cause it's like a blob there. But it, it's it's ugh. that needs to be fixed. That's no, that ugh. Yeah, that, that's concerning. And then, oh boy, this is going to be more traces. Look at this. Followed by this. And th this is, there's a little speck here, but. Oh boy. I really picked, I, I could sure pick them, can I? There's, this is a good amount of trace repair work. I mean, some of these are very minor. I don't. I don't think that would be a, necessarily a problem. Oxidized copper, lovely. So, so I believe Brandon didn't uh, say that this needed any trace repair, but obviously, it's difficult to see this stuff without a microscope. And uh, yeah, this this is all going to be this is uh, this is around B one right by the battery. Uh, I don't know where Y one is on the board. I could take a look and see. But if I if I hold this up to the camera. I could point out that we are looking at right here, right above the, right, right in this area here. That is where we are looking. So this, this just turned into a much longer project than a, than a recapper and turner on or if that's even a, a thing, which it isn't. But, uh, oh boy. Oh, and this one too. Mm. Yeah, that, that's pretty nasty there. That's that's this and right here, oof. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, some people may say, "Oh, you could just leave it; it's making a connection." But this is going to get worse. This this is not. It's not going to get better anytime soon, magically. Oh, 
At least there's some copper under this one. So far. <laughs> the Image Rider 2 is a beast, and Bruce, I am glad I'm not the only one. It is. It does make me feel a little better that this is uh, in the exact same spot you had your problem in. Hopefully my Mac 2 doesn't have these problems. I mean, I, look, I did a recap of it. And, uh, it works fine. I have to scrape with the other side of this thing here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Now there is a bit right there that is a bit deeper. I don't really want to gouge that. I'm just seeing if uh, it'll come. I think that's okay though. I don't know if that little spot there is going to cause us too much problem. Of course it's out of focus, but it's in focus for me. That little black dot there. Oh, I didn't even notice how late it is. We've been going for two hours already. It's 11 p.m. Holy moly. Sorry. All right, boy. This is this is turning out to be a fun one, huh? Well, I mean, that's just the matter of business. Sometimes the customer says it just needs a recapping, and uh, unfortunately, it needs more. Yes, Macintosh two. That's what we're looking at today, and quite an amount of traces here that are in need of some cleaning and refurbishment. Uh, hopefully most of these can just be scraped off and we'll tin them and put some UV solder mask over them just for good measure. But um, Quite a fair amount on this board so far. And thank you. I, I don't think I said hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. And hello, anybody else who uh, has joined. I didn't say hello to you yet. Welcome to the stream. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to be a little out of focus because I need to see what I'm doing here. There we go. Ah, Floppy Emu. I do not have one of those. I have a SCSI 2SD adapter. But uh, I should probably invest in one of those eventually. Maybe time to order more blades. This one is not as uh, sharp as it used to be. Hello, Crazy Tech Reviews. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of the discs can go bad. You know, I, I, have, I have a good amount right now. I'm not too worried about that happening, but... Um, I'm worried about the drives going bad soon, yeah. Oh, boy. I, here I am, I got the caps out, and I'm like, oh, well, we could recap this, and we'll be on our way, and uh, no. Just 
Ooh, it's just, ooh. Oh. Uh, Bunny is doing okay. We did a refill for her medicine. She, she was bouncing back pretty well, and then unfortunately without the medicine this morning, because we ran out, uh, and I had to wait to get a refill, uh, she was acting a little funny again. Uh, and in fact, uh, she will need her medicine in about an hour. So that is the limit I am putting on this stream. This will only go to three hours because I, uh, first off, it's, it's already, it's almost midnight. I mean, well, it will be midnight then. Uh, and then she will need some attention, but uh, we will get as much done as we can. And thank you very much for asking. That is very kind of you. And, uh, Bruce, are you, uh, you were doing something tonight, weren't you? I don't want to hold up you. I'd much rather watch somebody else do something than do something. Okay, be recapping, but maybe not streaming. That's okay. I do that too. Because, uh, as everyone knows, Bruce and I have said it a few times, whenever you're streaming something, it just takes a lot longer. And just because, you know, you're having conversation, you're having fun, you're talking to people, you're going off topic and this and that, but it just does take a little longer. And she's back. Oh, my back is aching quite a bit. Oh, boy. You know, we did stream back-to-back. -back. Bruce and I did stream back-to-back, -back, uh... It's a day or so ago. Not too long ago. I'm gonna stand up, stretch, because I've been sitting down for two hours. Always stretch. That's a, that's a good tip there. I will leave you, uh... with some hold music for a minute. Just go stretch, grab, grab a drink of water. We'll be back, uh, momentarily. Please hold. And uh, why don't you tell me what your favorite Mac laptop is in the chat? How about that?
Okay, and we are back. Ah, oh, hope you enjoyed the whole the music. Doop doop do. A yoga class, yes. <laughs> that is a very probable thing, Nick. That happens. Macintosh Portable. Ooh, that's that'll break your lap. Uh, the G3 Lombard, perfect choice. 1400 CS, very nice. Ah, uh, a MacBook Air 11 inch. I always, I always wanted one of those. Very portable. I think Bruce was quite fond of one as well. Uh, any unibody MacBook Pro. I have a 2008 15 inch unibody, which is quite nice. Uh, MacBook Pro from 2012, as you could still upgrade them. Yeah, I have a, uh, I have a uh, 2011 13 inch. Uh, MacBook Pro, which I recently acquired. I actually haven't touched it much since I got it. It's a bit shameful. Ooh, the 540C. Oh, I love I love a good 540C, especially if you have a PowerPC upgrade card, which mine does not. And especially if you have that PCI MCIA uh, or whatever it's called, the card uh, card adapter slot. Oh, I wanted one of those so badly. I remember looking on eBay and they were a hundred bucks. This is back in like 2002. <laughs> Those are very pricey. Very pricey. Okay, I'm just finishing a cookie. My wife made uh, cookies upstairs. A chocolate chip cookie. Yum, yum, yum. It's good to take a break every once in a while. Because my posture is probably not as good as it should be right now. I'm leaning over a considerably amount to look in here. Where this actually should come towards me more. What am I thinking? I could fix that very easily. Uh, that's a bit of a heavy thing, but that's a little bit easier. Yes, make your cookies. Bring them to me. Ah, this is this is a little bit easier. Ah, ah. In fact, let's, I know I, I don't have to pull the whole thing forward, but I don't want to. I don't want to just pull part of this forward because it gets a little top heavy or one sided. Rather. All right, all right, all right. We were looking at these terrible traces. And uh, a piece of dust hit the soldering iron, and now it's smelling like burning dust in the house. Isn't that lovely? All right, so yeah, around this area especially, we have a, a trace damage party going on. I mean, ugh. Right, a little, a little bit all around the scuzzy line here, which is concerning I mean this is a considerable bit of amount of trace work I wouldn't say this is light yes I need to focus uno momento por favor let me get down a little closer then I will adjust the focus bezels that much maybe I'm just maybe just because when I was a kid things had much thicker bezels than I, we got by I mean I'm all for a, a thin and attractive computer but sometimes these bezel-less things get a little get a little silly at least this is in a nice straight line Jeez, Louise.
I am being a little quiet here, I'm sorry. I'm enjoying the flavor of that cookie I had. Mmm. Chocolate chip. Now, I don't necessarily see any, uh, it's hard to tell. I don't necessarily see any breaks here. It looks like it was just all surface. <laughs> Maybe after a few years of doing what Bruce is doing, I can do that. Um, I just lock up. It, it, looks, it looks like that was just on the surface, this one. I think we're okay. Bruce will come down and be like, No, Steve. You have not seen what I have seen. There is clearly damage to that trace. It must be repaired. But it looks like I could just coat that with solder and put some solder mask on that and call that a day. At least at first glance. I am open to feedback in opinions. Uh, anything else along these edges? Because it's, uh, it's a little bit here. So you, got, you know, people who tell me, your phone is old, or, wow, that's old. I'm like, it, it still works. I'm th you buy me a new one? Unless you're buying me a new one. <laughs> Keep it the old one. My nephew, it's funny, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's seven. And uh, I told him, he always asked what phone I have and such. And I said, oh, I have an iPhone 8. He's like, oh, that's old. I'm like, it still works. <laughs> And recently we got, uh, my brother, uh, I gave him a, uh, a Mac Pro I got from a recycling center. It's a 2012 model. And uh, it's like, oh, that's old. I'm like, well, it's still fast. <laughs> but it ain't broke. I don't uh, fix it. Yeah, my iPhone 8 is from 2017. Uh, granted, the battery is shot. This is the second, this is actually a replacement phone. When I went to uh, get the battery replaced, it was still under warranty. So it just gave me a brand new phone. Um, and uh, the battery is pretty shot on it. I will have to get a replacement battery, but all the Apple stores are closed. I don't really want to go to Best Buy. I don't really trust them. They'll probably do something else to my phone. Just lightly scraping. Light, light, light. Doesn't look too bad either. Yeah, you know, I had a 6 before I had an 8. Before I had that, I had, uh... Oh, what did I have? I had the... I had the 5. And then before that, I had the 4. Before the 4, I had the 3G. And before the 3G, I had the original. So I skipped over quite a few. I would have loved to have the 3GS to record video. I just, you know... I think I had the, uh... The jailbroken video app, which, which wasn't that good, but... You know, the, the biggest feature on the phone is the camera. That's that's the thing I use most of it. Oh, no, I love I love a good camera. I think the camera on the 8 is fantastic. That being said, I've seen a friend of mine has an 11 Pro. And I'm like, oh, geez, those are gorgeous. The photos on that thing and the video, fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to have one of those. Uh, I don't have a need for it. Now, this trace, I could definitely see little blah, 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 little spots there. Uh, and I don't think I could dig all of those out, so I won't. What I will be doing instead is just running a trace repair wire. Probably. Let's see. Uh, some of that's coming out, but not enough where I'm satisfied with it. Wouldn't be a bad idea to run a trace wire there just to prevent it from going bad in the future. You know, I haven't, I haven't ever used an Android as my main phone. The only time I've used an Android is when folks uh, have a problem like hey could you do this for my phone or or I'm getting I'm seeing this weird thing can you take a look at it for me oh this trace is gone Ugh. 
Uh, that's the only time I play it around with the Android, and since I have no time to get used to it, I have to Google, how do I do that? Or take a look at things, because it, um, it's like, it's foreign to me. I don't, I, I don't know how to use it. I mean, yes, a lot of the things are the same. Opening an app is just a tap, you know. But as far as, like, where settings are or how to turn off, like, a certain thing. Because especially a lot of those phones come pre-installed with a bunch of crap. You know, Verizon will make a deal with whatever and whoever and like, oh, well, you could use this app for messaging instead of the built-in one. Even if it doesn't have all the features and it's ten times slower. Goodness, this trace just keeps going now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I love using hot corners. I love that. I love I love setting up a hot corner on the right, bottom right. Uh, so when I press it, it shows all my desktop icons. Because I'm always dragging and dropping things from the desktop. That's a trick I learned about probably 10, 15 years ago. On Mac OS X, you could drag something from the desktop into like a window or trying to open something or whatever, and I've been just using the heck out of it. It's a great tip. <laughs> That's what I would imagine, Trina. I would imagine uh, the opposite is true, that it's just, you just have to get used to the way it works. And I've, look, you use whatever phone you want to use, I'll use whatever phone I want to use. I don't care. Which one is quote unquote better? I really don't care. And if, in fact, if there was no competition, these phones would all stink. Because Apple would say, well, we don't need to make it that much better. Or whatever, you know. Uh, they would all be crummy. Yeah, and that being said, I do have that Android phone that has not been fixed yet, which is a real shame, but I think the file system just got nuked. I don't think there's any way to recover that. I think I spent about four hours on the stream trying to fix that that one time. Didn't get much of anywhere. I think this trace has a break in it too, although I could be assuming things. But for how long this trace is, I, I'm just cleaning this up as best I can. But I, I'm running a wire. There's no no sense in trying to fill in this with solder because there there I'm sure these are breaks here. Yeah, just you could see all that coming away. Oof. Let's get our multimeter out, our beep 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 machine. You still have that ThinkPad laptop from that stream. Yes, I do. I don't get rid of things. <laughs> I don't get rid of things. So that's definitely a break there. So there's a break there, and let's see about up here. Because that's the thing. Some some of these traces look bad, but you know they're still making a connection. I'll just you know touch them up, but. And that's a broken trace there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Got our work cut out for us, don't we? <laughs> but you have to hold the phone the other way to get reception? Well, I got a free iPhone case out of that. I'm not complaining. Although that iPhone case sucked. And it put a shortage on everybody trying to get iPhone cases because the thing was hardly out and they, they had no cases for the darn things. Yeah, that's broken. Oh, we got another one right above there. Are you kidding me? This is like 
Ooh, this is Broken Trace City. Population Macintosh 2. Yeah, I, th I know that's, you know, the iPhone does get a good amount of updates, but hello, Jay. Welcome to uh, the stream where we have plenty of traces that need a lot of attention. I'm pretty sure that's another break right there. Does it go beep, 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 beep? We shall see. Sorry. So this board is so big that it's like falling off the board. The, 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 um, the wood board I have and when that happens uh, it tips a little bit further and further away from the microscope so it goes out of focus sometimes so that is my fault another broken trace how am I not surprised Oh boy, I got my work cut out for me on this one, don't I? Uh, anywhere else in this vicinity. I'm going to take this out and look at it with my own peepers and just see if I see anything else obvious. A lot of dust here which doesn't help, but I know you can't see this, but... I should have did a, a better visual inspection of this before, but there was a lot of dust on here, so I did not. That's my fault. I think those are the only major ones I see so far. But. Uh, no, Bruce, but I will scroll up. I forgot what you said, Bruce, and I can't scroll fast enough. Please scold me publicly. <laughs> ha! <laughs> well, that, that, that is true. I know he said that. That was probably something with more wisdom that he wished to convey to me. But my memory ain't, ain't no good in no times. So. <laughs> That's right. May my Mac 2 be free of broken traces. You jinxed me! <laughs> it's all Bruce's fault. It's all Bruce's fault. Just seeing if there's any other. Well, there's another. May the trace be with you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recap the board. Uh, that is what I promised the customer. Uh, I will leave the caps off of the areas that require trace repair. And I will reach out to them to see what they want to do about that. I mean, obviously for a working system that needs to be done. But uh, I was under the assumption that this one did not really require that. So we have one, two, uh, a few spots here. Jeez. Way too few Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions. Well, cover your ears, gentlemen and ladies, because uh, 
I do a pretty terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. The traces. It's just like gargling. That's 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 what I do. Dana does a much better one if he's still around. I don't know if he's still hanging out in the chat. He does a much better impression than I do. What am I squinting at? Let me zoom in the darn thing. It does sound like I'm choking on something. <laughs> Did I lose sound? Hopefully you didn't lose sound. Everything looks okay on my end. The sound meter is going boop 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 boop. Nope. It was you. Okay. Troublemaker. Troublemaker. I think this one may be okay. We can confirm that though. That one's okay. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see if this one's broken now. Hopefully not. There's circles in the middle. Those are, are little uh, veers and solder uh, balls. Okay, so that that is still making a connection. A via. Why do I say veers? It's weird. General veers. No, via. Thank you, Bruce. I'm just making a butt out of myself today, aren't I? You ever watch that Mac 84 guy? He makes a butt out of himself. <laughs> I listen to Bruce too much. Yeah, let me just gouge at the board with this knife, because Bruce wouldn't do that. But you know, I think he's, I think he's keeping the secrets from me. <laughs> yeah, let me go ahead and just not listen to, to his sage wisdom and just screw things up on purpose. <laughs> and no, thank you. Oh. Now we're getting a history lesson here. I can't compete with those facts, Bruce. I I just I I don't have that knowledge in me. My knowledge is is you know pertaining to old crummy computers, and the changes they made to the Star Wars special editions. That that's that, that's all my brain. Ask my wife; she'll back me up on this. That's all I know. That's all I am knowledgeable about. Scrapey scrape 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 It's the Mac 84 song. Scrape to scrape. Right, that should be okay. Uh, 
we have little dots here and there. Too many to count, to be honest. There are too many traces here to count. That one's okay. Some of it's just, just surface crap. But we still want to get that away. <laughs> I need to order new blades. <laughs> and I should have when you had your stream on the other day and you were talking about the exact blade that you ordered. <laughs> and you said, by the way, I and I thought I thought you were, you know, directly speaking to only me because that's how I think. <laughs> like, by the way, these are the blades I use and I'm thinking to myself, "Huh. I could use a new blade." You are welcome to donate to me. Uh, those of you on Patreon already donate to me, so you don't have to donate to me. But <laughs> I will I will purchase blades after the show. How about that? I don't know when they're going to come because uh, it's not an essential package. But oh, we had another break there. I think we may. No, thankfully the, the bunny is nowhere near the blades. How about that? Still making a connection, I see. Is that actually copper? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, that one's okay. Uh, I don't think a switchblade would be uh, the best tool on delicate electronics as such as this. And there's a no bloody another one. Uh, you said we need something more precise. So we have about 20 minutes or so left of this stream. Uh, like I said, I have a pretty hard cutoff at midnight tonight. But uh, I'm sure this will not be the last you see of this computer, because we haven't even started to put caps on it. Unfortunately. Microfiber pen. I have never heard of that. I have a microfiber cloth, but that's for cleaning. Let's zoom out a little bit. And, uh, let's see if we missed any. All right, so let's go along here. We have one, two, Two traces so far. Uh, let's see. I mean, I'm just counting the spots. Two. That's a three right there. Well, it's like a three, four, five, six, seven. Jeez. Uh, this four, five. My goodness. Oh, and then, yeah, this. 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 It's just... Uh, I gotta go give the bunny medicine. And I have to syringe feed her. And that's gonna take a good half hour or so. She is eating, just not as much as she should be. Yep, right by the battery terminal. How am I not surprised? So we just need to make sure she weighs about... Used to weigh about 1.3 kilograms. 
and uh, she weighs about 1.1. So she lost a fair bit of weight. She is nibbling on food on her own, so her appetite is back, just not at the levels it should be. And unfortunately, she's an older bunny. She just recently went blind. Poor little thing has cataracts. And so uh, she's dealing with a lot right now, but she is otherwise being a good bunny. And hopefully the medicine just continues to do its magic. And we will go from there. And the light falls off the, the microscope. Uh, that's it for all the things to do. Include a cheap plastic thing that attaches to a metal thing. Come on. I don't think that's a break there, but... You don't look good. Well, you know, the way I see it is, you know what, she... I don't think it's completely dark. Her vision's just cloudy with cataracts. And she has a little friend bunny. And, you know, they nuzzle each other and everything. So uh, it's not like her life is uh, completely changed. I think animals adapt to things much differently than us humans. You know, they just... Oh, by the way, I can't see you now. Okay, well, I still got my excellent sense of smell and excellent sense of hearing. So I'll be okay. But uh, she is... She is... Uh... We don't know exactly her age. This is called... Uh, this is now Bunny Yak. Instead of uh, me be yakking about Max, um, we think she's about ten. Obviously, we, we got her from somebody else, uh, so we don't know her exact age. But uh, you know, for ten years old, she is not doing bad. She's a good little bun. All right, these look okay. Aren't too terrible. Yes, a helper bunny. <laughs> Although she's not helping when she eats her food and her treats. So we try and feed her treats to get better, and, and uh, her pal comes along and steals them. So you have to hold her back, or bring her somewhere else. As, you know, helper animals do. <laughs> they don't really help. <laughs> Just like that wonderful, beautiful comic, and I forget the name of it. What is it, Hyperbully and a Half or something like that? With the helper dog? Oh, that, that. Hilarious. Special dog and the helper dog. Uh, bunnies can live anywhere from typically 10 to 12 years, but uh, I've known personally people who've had them for anywhere from 15 to 18 to 20. So, I mean, they, they're similar to cats if, if they are kept well and indoors. Uh, and they have regular checkups. It greatly increases their lifespan. I mean, these little guys um, can be fragile. They hide their symptoms of pain. So if uh, you don't notice they're not eating or something like that, they could, within 12 hours, take a very nasty turn, and you could end up with uh, with a with an emergency. Uh, because the way their digestive system is, is it needs to be always moving. If it stops. Uh, there's a there's a condition called GI stasis, and um, unfortunately, the uh, not a very good outcome of that. Uh, so you need to keep a lot of things on hand, and of course, you know you learn these things as you have these animals for so many years. Uh, you know you need baby gas drops to help get their gas and their bloating and their belly under control. Um, a lot of little subtle things you have to be aware of with them, but they are excellent pets. They litter train themselves. Uh, ours knows their names. They, they come when you call them. They can be very affectionate on their own terms. Some of them love being held. Some of them will kill you if you try and hold them. They are prey animals, so they do not, not most of them do not like being picked up and held. But yes, this is now Bunny84. <laughs> 
Uh, you can clicker train them, although I don't think any of ours uh, would put up with that. But uh, basically means you have like a, a little tool that makes a clicking noise. And you sort of train them to do, you know, positive things. Oh, you, you know, you uh, retrieved that treat, or you played with the toy, or you went to the bathroom, or I don't know. Um, you could do that with a lot of animals. I'm not saying that anything too special, but... Anywho, about 15 minutes left here on the stream. We've got 24 wonderful people watching. Thank you so much. And we got 28 likes. And we got a super chat earlier from Orlando. So thank you very kindly for that. Very much appreciated. Fun fact, uh, rabbits are considered exotic animals in the United States, which means... Their vet bills <laughs> are very exotic. Uh, which is always entertaining when you go to the bunny vet and they're like, oh, you just need an exam and a, and a, uh, some medicine and a thing or whatever. Here's a three digit bill. Enjoy. Or here's a four digit bill. Have fun with that. Yeah, we have to give her medicine and food via the syringe. It's a whole ordeal. Three hours isn't enough for you, Jay? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? So just making sure that these little spots here on this important looking rail here in good shape. It looks like it is. It looks like it's all just surface garbage. That's here. That needs to be tidied up. That's all. <laughs> Cars are not as cuddly. This, this is true. This is very true. They're not as cute either. I, would, I don't think I'd describe a car as cute. But. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do with this board then is uh, I'm going to inform the owner that it will require quite extensive trace repair. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I don't think I'd be alone in, in assuming that this is light repair. I mean, there are quite a lot of spots here. And uh, quite a few chips also need some attention. So I wish it were as simple as a, just a recapping. Uh, sadly, that is not the case in this particular, with this particular machine. After the bunny check, the stream resumes. I mean, if if you all want to see me syringe feed a rabbit food, <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome to watch me. I don't think my target demographic would appreciate that, and the bunny would probably very much not appreciate that. <laughs> she doesn't like when I do it off camera. My goodness. So I will retell you with a uh, story from earlier today. Uh, I am getting, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm getting a different uh, internet service provider. I'm getting a, a Fios connection um, installed on the September 1st, uh, 1st of September. And so, uh, because I, I'm fed up with the unreliable upload speed of my connection. And right now it's decent. Right now it's uh, it's probably 30 or 40 megabytes up, which is fine if it's stable like that, but it has not been stable. And, and so I made the decision. It was a cheaper price. It was, I was paying $55 for 200 down. Uh, and of course the bill shows it as like 100 something dollars and they put in all these promotions to make you feel like you're getting a good deal and all this stuff. And um, so my speed is, is 200 down and about 30 up. It, it should be at least. 
And so, you know, I was having so much trouble, as, as you who were watching noticed. My upload was just at like five, nine megabits. You know, it was just like this horrible slow upload speed. And, you know, I was like, you know what, this is so annoying. So I called them up, you know, we had a hurricane come through here not long ago. I called them up about downed wires on August 6th. They said, oh, send somebody out. They never did. I called again on the 15th. Oh, we'll send somebody out. They never did. And on the 15th, the same call. I'm like, look, my connection's really wonky. The download speed is fine. The upload speed is not. What's going on? They're, of course, their first thing is, oh, it's your modem. You got, you got to get, Let's replace your modem. I said, I, you're not because I purchased a modem, so I wouldn't have to pay a rental fee from you guys. $10 a month. I just went out and bought a $70 modem, so I didn't have to pay a fee for that. And uh, I said, well, it's probably your modem, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I said, well, all right, whatever. If you can't deal with that, at least come out and check the lines. And I said, oh, sure, we'll set you up for an appointment. They went to transfer my call, and they dropped me. So I never got closure on that. Uh, and then uh, I called back because I wanted someone to investigate my issue. And, of course, Moore's Law... Uh, by the time I called back, uh, my upload was working fine. So they couldn't find any issues at all. And uh, I spoke to that guy on the phone. I said, they said I need a new modem. He said, my signal looks like your modem's good here, bro. You're fine. And I'm like, ah, perfect. So I called up to where this story is going. I called up to my current cable service provider and told them, I am, well, that is very nice, Trina. Unfortunately, that is not the case in the old, the old U.S. of A. Um, unfortunately, I called up my current provider and I said, you know what, I'd like to disconnect my service. I was being very polite. I uh, was not going to try and start an argument because in my mind, there's nothing they could do to retain me. I, I'm fed up. And so uh, they go, oh, well, why, why are you unhappy with your service? And I said, you know what? It's just the upload is too slow. And it's not as advertised. I'm paying 230 for the 230 speed and I'm getting like five up. Sometimes it's near 30. Most of the time it's not. And so immediately they say, oh, well, what modem do you have? Because they want you to buy their modem from them. And I said, well, I bought this one from Amazon. Uh, same exact one you recommended. It's Dioxys 3, whatever the heck. It's an Aero surfboard. And of course, they're mispronouncing it because they're just reading off a prompter and whatever. And they're like, well, your modem, let me let me check. And they put me on hold and they come back. No, oh, yeah, your modem should be OK. I'm like, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's not. I'm doing video streams and it's uh, cutting out. So this uh, we were talking about uh, me calling up the cable company and yelling at them and uh, the Internet company. And um, they, they immediately try and say, well, you. You only have the 200 megabit service. You want the 400 megabit service. That's better for, for video calls and things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, are you crazy? Do you know who you're talking to? Are you, are you insane? There's no, there's no, there's no video call that's going to take up all 400 megabits down and 30 megabits up. You, am I streaming like 8K video? No. The most I need is like 5,000 up, a stable 5,000 up. You know, just, Jeez. And and so, you know, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So they're arguing with me that a, a, an upgrade to this 400 line is going to be any better. And she keeps interrupting me, and I, I just raised my voice. I said, I, I just want my service disconnected. And I just kept saying, I want it disconnected, blah, blah, blah. So she, got, she was going to get the manager, and she's like, oh, there's a wait for the supervisor. He's the one that has to disconnect you, blah, blah, blah. And so while I'm waiting, uh, I pull, I was, I basically said, um, something along the lines of, because they mentioned this is this is the kicker there. They mentioned that uh, if I were to cancel, I'm still paying through September 21st. So, no matter what, I'm still paying that bill. So I made it sound like I was interested in staying because I didn't want to pay the full bill. And what they did was, they said, "Oh well, we could double your speed. You'll get 400 down, and we'll reduce your future bill." I said, "There's no way I am staying unless you reduce my current bill as well." I said, I'm not paying $55 a month for inferior service. That is, it, I'm not doing that. And so they brought my current bill down, and then they reduced my next month bill. So essentially, 
I am paying the same I am for one month, but I'm getting two months out of it. And by the end of that of next month, I'll be gone. Because I'm not, even though it's $5 less than Fios for 400 down, 40 up, I'd much rather have the consistent 200 up fiber connection and 200 down. And even though I know it's a bit more than that, it's like 230-ish, I'd much rather have that than dealing with the modem. Because Fios, you just deal with the ONC at the outside of your house or whatever. I'd rather deal with that than uh, these crummy modems and th these people that, you know, talk down to you and think that I mean, they're just trying to sell you a higher thing. And I understand that's all, that's what they're trying to do. They're just doing the job. But, 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 they are, you know, it's just this marketing gizmo, gimmick, rather. You know, it's like, it, it's ridiculous. Because nobody, I mean, in, in my personal opinion, Yes, if you have a faster internet connection speed, yeah, things will download and upload faster, but, you know, 100 megs down and 50 megs up is, is usually satisfactory for most people. Unless you have, like, 10 video streams downloading at the same time, you know, 10 people streaming stuff and a bunch of people streaming or whatever upwards at the same time, then you'll run into issues. But I remember back in the day at my parents' house, our internet connection was, like, the optimum uh, cable, whatever, uh, 50 down. And it was fun. We never really had too many problems. 50 down was fun. The upload was like 10. That was a problem. But the upload speeds are always a problem. But yeah, so I'm not seeing... Uh, uh, so that's my, my rant about the cable company. They they bumped my speed. It, I haven't dropped any frames, but it's just a matter of time until it happens, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing any other trace damage on this board. Um, yes, I know two minutes to midnight. She's not going to mind if I'm a minute late. She'll yell at me. She'll thump. She'll run around. But, um, not seeing other, any other damage right now. There, I am I am still concerned about these chips here and here. There's a lot of green on these chips. And there was another one. Where did I see the other one? Over here, there's some minor crud on those chips as well. Um... See, and and uh, over here as well. So there's there's. Hopefully, it's just something the ultrasonic cleaner can take care of if if this board will fit in there. I hope. Um, eep. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be a problem. Whole, my neck and back is kind of hurting me right now from bending over and looking into this microscope for three hours in a row. I think I deserve a little bit of a, a break and relaxation and go to bed because uh, it's midnight here and I work tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think I think that's good. Yeah, so I'm going to contact this individual who gave me the board and uh, let them know they're going to require some trace damage on here, a trace repair for the damage on here. But uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's what we discovered today. I thought it was going to be a simple. <laughs> wrong button. I pushed the wrong button. I thought it was going to be a simple recapping, but um, not the case. Not the case. And look, you could see I put the little streaming dealie uh, up on the... Uh... Has that been there the whole time? I just forgot to take it off. That's like the, the stream health. I could hide that. It doesn't have to be there. But... Um... Yes, 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 yes. Bruce, you should totally stream. I'm teeing you up here. Got 27 guaranteed viewers coming your way, Bruce. I'll give you some time to mull it over as we we talk about it. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. Ooh. All right. So that was, that was exciting. Uh, Bruce is one of the 27. Well, I am... I am not counted as a viewer here, so I would be 27. And now we're down to 24. See what happened? See what happened? Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, wrap this up uh, while Bruce decides if he wants to stream or not. Uh, if you want to stick around for a moment, you will see my fancy capture box here. And um, let's let's let's. Listen if you can. Let's see if let's see if we hear anything familiar. Uh, 
Ah, uh, there we go. I was hoping the chime would come through. So I'm getting fancy here. I now have the audio and the video out. Sorry if that was loud. <laughs> I didn't adjust the levels yet. Oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> Sorry. I'll have to manually adjust the audio on that. <laughs> Came across too loud. Oopsie doodle. My bad. We will lower that considerably. I, I mean, I can't hear it, so... Um... I put it way down in OBS. <laughs> I should have warned you guys. Sorry. 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 So what's nice about this um, little setup I have here is uh, I could I could basically plug anything into one of these VGA uh, switches here. <laughs> set that as my alarm and I could um, you know just share whatever's on the screen which is very handy um, what I want to show you is something I just accomplished last night which took a lot of careful careful uh, setting up well thank you Jay and thank you for thinking of me when you when you acquired said scaler um, it took quite a bit to set this up because Old Max being Old Max. What kind of capture device do you have? That is an excellent question. It is the most generic one on eBay. I'm actually thinking of doing a review on it, but I think somebody else beat me to the punch. It is simply called USB 3.0 Video Capture uh, HDMI 4K. Now, it is not a 4K capture box. It only does 1080p. Uh, it will downscale 4K, but what doesn't? Um... It's a USB 3 device. It works fine over USB 2. That's how I'm using it now. It has HDMI in, HDMI out, and a microphone in audio jack as well. So that might be why it's a little blown out. Um, so yeah, what's nice about this is you're seeing a live Macintosh, obviously. It's a power computing Mac right here. Uh, I'm not going to run the benchmark because uh, everyone who was on the test stream earlier uh, <laughs> knows exactly how long that took. That was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like 50 bucks. It's not bad. Um, and let's see, can we open our test that we did? Yeah, so this Mac is 524% uh, faster than a Power Macintosh 6100. Uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, set 100% system, current system. Uh, I guess I have to run another system to do there, but, uh, yeah, cool. So, I don't know if Bruce has decided if he wants to stream yet, but, uh, I just clean up the desktop here. There's a bunch of, bunch of crud I don't know. I could hang on to that, I guess. Uh, we have a CD in here. But what, what I wanted to show you is, if I go to Chooser, and now I go to Apple Talk, <gasps> I see my Mac Mini G4 running Mac OS X Tiger. How about that? And what's nice is it actually works. So I can open up the hard drive. I can open up my user folder. Ah, uh, no worries, Bruce. We will keep an eye on our YouTube notifications if you decide to do that. But uh, what's nice is I could just, you know, now easily just copy things over left and right. Very easy to do so. Uh, it's easy for me to take screenshots. So I upload screenshots to Macintosh Garden sometimes. Uh, so I'll take screenshots of... Well, why is teach text opening? I don't want teach text opening. We need simple text. Uh, where is simple text? Uh, so sometimes I will take screenshots of stuff on Macintosh Garden that does not have the appropriate screenshot set up. Uh, that is one of them, just the folder contents of something, or uh, like the about window for the installer or whatever. Uh, so now I'm able to just take screenshots, plop them over the network, uh, convert the file if I have to. And that is that. So that's, uh, that is that.
Um, yeah, that's all really I wanted to show you on this machine. I mean, I could do tons more on it. Uh, it is a nice 603E, I believe. Um, what, what is it? I mean, it told me, I think, under... Let's see. What did it say it was? Oh, system info. There we go. Yeah, we have a 604E, rather, 180 megahertz, well, 180.5 megahertz, excuse me, and a whole megabyte of L2 cache, so, yeah, so, a pretty zippy machine, I haven't had too many problems with it, I actually, uh, this was running system 7.6, um, I think the CD is erroneously labeled as 761, but it doesn't have 61 on it, uh, 761 on it, it just had 76. So I just did the manual update to system 761, which uh, resolves a lot of little buggy issues. And I haven't really had any problems yet, knock wood. So yeah, that's uh, that's really all I wanted to show you on this machine. I uh, do like it a lot. Let me clean up our desktop a little bit here. Uh, I really haven't had any problems with it. Why did you put that over there? Um, yeah, so we could uh, hopefully did you hear that? Was that too loud? Was that eep too loud? Just trying to get a, a feel for the sound here. You you will be my ears. Sorry if uh, that's going to hurt you a little bit. Let me know if that was too loud. If that eep was too loud. I know there's a delay with the comments and the YouTube and all that fun stuff. but Nothing came across. Okay, it might be too soft now. I might have said it's too soft. Let's try again. Right, was that too loud? That eep? There is a bit of feedback, it looks like, coming from that audio socket, but it could just be weird. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. So that is at the uh, lower sound level here. So if I... Let me, let me lower this on here, you lower this down, let me raise the system volume up, is that a suitable noise, a suitable sound level? <laughs> Too bad the other eep was wasted, there was never a wasted eep, never a wasted eep. Oh, my neck is stiff. Ugh quieter now. Okay. I can adjust it a little bit. Can't hear it. Okay. It's just a matter of playing around with the levels here. Yeah, because I, I honestly can't hear what you guys are hearing, so it, you are my ears. I think there's an audio out on this capture box. I could probably plug headphones into, but I'm too lazy to get up and do that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Sweet. All right, so let me take a screenshot of the sound settings so I don't mess that up in the future. So the Mac is at full sound, but OBS is not. So excellent. All righty. Um, yeah, I think that's about it here. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching the stream. And I will type uh, thank you in our little stickies window here because, whoopsie, why the heck not? And yes, the time is set to 1920 because I didn't use the set date control panel correctly. But uh, thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this stream. Uh, I will continue with this Macintosh 2 sometime in the future, I'm sure. Uh, I will be continuing with the SE30 as well. And I appreciate all the super chats, all the likes, all the comments, all the subscribes. If you haven't liked the video, please do that uh, before you leave. And uh, you can always catch me on social media. Mac84TV is my handle. And if you want to reach out to get your board recapped or want to reach out to me about other services, go to Mac84.net and uh, make sure you go to the modern site. There's a page about services there. But uh, hope you have a good evening. Uh, take care, everybody. Uh, thank you. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. So I will hunt for the end stream button as I stretch across everything here. But uh, take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.